Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I want to illustrate the Gaussian coppola, which has been blamed as a culprit in the credit crunch. Why has the Gaussian coppola been so much implicated? Well, prior to the credit crunch, much of the activity in subprime was the securitization into structured finance vehicles of credit-sensitive assets, where the reference is a pool of credit-sensitive assets. And so it's very important to the investors the default correlation between those credit sensitive assets is the default correlation high is it low and it turns out the Gaussian Coppola is a very elegant and simple way of treating the complex phenomenon of default correlation but in retrospect it turns out to be too convenient but here's the formula for a bivariate normal distribution that uses a Gaussian Coppola don't be turned off by the notation all the Coppola does is take as an input two marginal distributions. Those are unconditional distributions denoted here by U and V. So it takes those as an input, and the Coppola is the function, the glue, that joins them together and returns for us a single bivariate distribution. So that's the idea with the Coppola. It joins two marginals into a single, in this case, bivariate distribution, but it could be a multivariate distribution. So what do we mean by that? Well, here's an example. Let's take two bonds. The first bond, let's say, has a probability of default of 5%. And the second bond also has a probability of default of 5%. Now, we probably know that if we assume they are independent, those bonds are, are not correlated, we can ask a joint cumulative distribution function question, which is to say, what is the probability that both of the bonds default simultaneously? Well, under independence, we can multiply the 5% times the 5%, and 0.25% is the answer. It's also the answer given back, in this case, by the Coppola function. Okay, now let's ask the question, what is the probability that both of the bonds default if they have a default correlation of, say, 0.3. Now, we can't just multiply these together, but we could use the Gaussian Coppola function. And so, this 5%, now we're going to translate into a normal deviate. So that, in the case of the Gaussian Coppola, we're making that huge assumption that there's a normal distribution, that this marginal distribution is described by normal. And of course, we know that's dubious assumption to make. Okay, but just to illustrate, the 5%, if we apply Excel's norm S in function, it gives us the inverse standard normal cumulative distribution function. All that means is that we, we were returned 1.65, that means if we, on a standard normal distribution, if we go left of mean, 1.65 standard deviations, we arrive at the quantile that cuts off that distribution at the 5% point. To the left of that tail is 5% of the area under the standard normal curve. And so right here, 1.65 corresponds to the inverse cumulative distribution function for a standard normal. Same thing for bond Y. Our 5%, which is a uniform distribution running from 0 to 100, is translated into normal deviate by way of the inverse transformation. So now we have the two inputs. One marginal or unconditional distribution is, is transformed into its inverse or normal deviate. So is the other. Now the Coppola function then, which I'm not showing you the math behind that. The math is complex, but the idea is simply that the Coppola function is going to take each one as an input and the correlation parameters. So that's the key idea. We're going to assume a correlation of 0.3, and what it's going to return for us is a single, in this case, bivariate cumulative distribution function. And so now with a, we can have in a single answer the answer to the question, what is the probability that both bonds simultaneously default? And you can see here with 0.3 correlation, the Gaussian Coppola is telling us there's a 0.71% chance that both bond X and Y default. Again, that's a bivariate distribution function, meaning what is the probability that this distribution, that X is less than 5%, 
and simultaneously the probability that y is less than 5%. And we get 0.71%. The density function, or the density of this Coppola function is plotted here in this three-dimensional mountain peak. And we can ask the bivariate question by thinking about carving out a vertical shaft. In this case, notice this axis. This corresponds to the standard normal. And if you can think about slicing this, slicing through this with a plane, we would have a standard normal, such that default for bond X represents left of 1.645 over here in this area, and such that bond X and bond Y simultaneously defaulting, bond Y, we don't have the numbers, but that would be over in this region, constitutes an outcome that is characterized by the vertical shaft carved out in this corner. It's very stubby shaft, but it's going to end up being 0.71%, less than 1% of the total area under the surface or the volume of the mountain. So we have a low probability here, less than 1% of both of the outcomes being in the left tail. And now I can increase the correlation, let's say 0.5, and the mountain peak is going to change shape a little bit and let me get very extreme here with a 0.9 or so and you can see we end up with a very sharp kind of mountain and now with a high court default correlation the bivariate distribution is 4.18 percent in other words the probability that both of the bonds default and when they have a high correlation or almost perfect correlation and each marginal is five percent is almost four is almost 5% itself. And then what that means here is that if bond X defaults, we're in the left tail here, there's a high correlation with bond Y defaulting, we're also in the left tail, and the vertical shaft in this case ends up being fully, or almost fully, 5% of the total area within the mountaintop. So that's all the Coppola does. It conveniently incorporates the correlation into a function that combines each of the marginal or unconditional distributions to produce for us a single, in this case, bivariate cumulative distribution function. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.